Good morning and welcome to Issues and Views. I'm your host, Todd Anderson. I have two guests with me today. Uh, Tony Astrin is a board member with B Team Buffalo, and Beverly David Lewis is the Director of Community Affairs for Buffalo Promise Neighborhood. Thank both of you for coming today, Issues and Views. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Now, um, you guys have a, uh, an event coming up. It's an annual event called City of Light, and that's happening on December the 8th. Tell me more about that, City of Light. Sure. City of Light is the signature event for B Team Buffalo, which I'll explain about in a little while. B, B Team Buffalo is a group of volunteers that does all sorts of activities to help better the city. So basically civic engagement, if you if you want to say that. But uh, City of Light is really our event that, that we put on every year. Mm-hmm. What ends up happening is about 100 to 150 or so volunteers all come out on a Saturday in December on a given day, and we choose a different neighborhood in the city of Buffalo every year. Mm -hmm. And we decorate usually about 50 or more homes um, for a neighborhood that perhaps is a a little bit more underserved and brighten up the holidays. Mm -hmm. We will normally include a carnival for the community, for children, which includes Mm -hmm. toys and games. We'll usually do some type of tree lighting and caroling just a really kind of joyous event and really it ties back to uh this notion of city of light which of course many people know that expression around here and that goes back to the pan-american exposition of 1901 when Mm -hmm. the city was completely lit up with electric lights and bright festive so our goal really is to help a neighborhood that maybe could use a little bit of a boost and Again, many volunteers from Buffalo and beyond who all want to come down and, and give up a Saturday morning and afternoon and help make it look a little bit brighter. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's um, all fun. So this year, what's what neighborhood is the lucky neighborhood? Sure. Well, this year, and this is this is why my uh, friend Beverly is here with me. We are uh, we are partnering with the Buffalo Promise neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And in particular, our we always have what we call a staging area. So it's kind of a mm-hmm. central place where volunteers can gather, get their supplies, you know, take a break and, and get some get some food, things like that. And also we're, we're, we'll put on the carnival. So this year, right in the heart of the Buffalo Promise neighborhood, we're staging at Buffalo Public School 80, Highgate Heights Elementary School. So that's right in the heart of the Buffalo Promise neighborhood. And primarily, we'll be decorating on streets streets such as Highgate, uh, Windspear, Rounds, oh, okay. in that general area, sort of between Bailey and Eckert. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the, the goal is, obviously, when we pick a neighborhood, um, it, not everything is perfect because some houses, you know, either want to decorate on their own or maybe mm-hmm. don't want to participate or whatever. But we try to get as many houses clustered as possible because obviously then when you've got all that decorated and then at, at night you really see that effect and that lift that it has on on the community. So that's what we're we're focusing on this year. And uh, and you know, I'm sure Beverly can talk more about uh, sort of how we got connected and mm-hmm. and what it's all about this year now do you guys just show up and decorate um a person's house or do you ask in advance or yeah well well it's it's a it's a long process in terms of you know we're we're doing planning fundraising everything almost year round but in terms of finding the houses our volunteers literally it's i guess what you'd call boots to the ground in terms mm-hmm. of going out going you know old-fashioned door-to-door dropping off flyers as well as you know oh, okay. waivers to sign that they you know indeed want to participate um the really good thing about city of light as well is that the uh the residents then get to keep keep the decorations so it's not wow. like they decorate the house and then it's like okay then it's yeah. all going down i mean uh-huh. and it's 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 more it's it's not just lights it's also you know garland or um you know huge snowflakes or you know candy canes coming out of the ground well it's not just sort of a you know a, a quick little Generic. polishing job it's it's right. it's really good decorating and you know the oh. the volunteers definitely take a lot of pride into that um but yeah certainly we'll do the canvassing but uh, uh, of course you know with with the partnership with the buffalo promise neighborhood as well as highgate heights there's also we've also had plenty of other support to help um talk to the particular neighborhood i know their block clubs have have certainly spread the word as well um 
So it's really it's a it's a full on effort, but more than anything, actually coming door to door is really mm-hmm. I think what um, what helps legit legitimize it. I mean, otherwise, if you're you know if you're a homeowner in the neighborhood and then you know we're we're coming in that year, it mm-hmm. may be like, is this for real? People are really gonna come decorate my house? And <laughs> how does this all work? For like, free? what's it? What's the catch? Uh-huh. So, but uh, but no, we've uh, you know we've been doing it now this is our 11th year we've uh we've been in existence since 2008 and mm-hmm. um it's just something that, that you know we decided we want to do that first year and then it it went so well that it became a tradition so now b team buffalo what's that all about yeah b team buffalo uh, again it's uh, started in 2008 it's an all volunteer organization. It's mainly young professionals for the most part. Uh-huh. Um, most people who help live in and around the city, but others like myself live in nearby suburbs. It's really just kind of binded by this notion of you know we want to give back to the city. We want to make make it a better place. And mm-hmm. for those, especially for those, uh, and this is like somebody like myself who want to volunteer, but perhaps. Perhaps you don't have a particular organization in mind or mm. you're busy and you want to be a little bit more flexible in terms of what's happening. B Team Buffalo will plan events all year round. Sometimes there are things that we find. Other times people come to us for help. Uh, we'll tend to have on average, I'd say, about two to three events a month. So we will we will do things such as river cleanups with the um, with Buffalo um Niagara Waterkeeper, or um, we help at the National Buffalo Wing Fest every year, serving wings or doing okay. setup. Um, you know, so there, there's there's a ton of different opportunities all year round. Mm-hmm. Uh, but City of Light, far and beyond, is our biggest event. That's why we do right. so much planning for it, and all those volunteers coming out on one day. There's a there's a lot that goes into making making that day a special day. Now, if somebody wants to be involved in B Team Buffalo, is that possible? Is there a application Absolutely. process or something? No, it's uh, it's it's extremely easy uh, to find anything about B Team Buffalo. It's really just you can find us on the web at bteambuffalo.com. We're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, and it's really just you know check our calendar of events see what's happening definitely subscribe to our newsletter which comes out each month and runs down what all the different opportunities are mm-hmm. and we see what you like click on a button sign up it's it's usually like name email phone number um and then we get in contact with you from there with the details of when and where mm-hmm. to meet and what's needed and that's that's it so no there's no there's no special rhyme or reason again i would say that most of our volunteers do tend to be more kind of on the young professional side Mm -hmm. but certainly you know we're not going to discriminate if anybody at you know really any age age level wants to come out and certainly we see that with city of light as well it's it's all walks of life who come together so old folks are welcome too huh absolutely (laughs) (laughs) so um why B team? Why not A team? What's the is there an A team? Oh man, you know I wish. Um, I've I've personally as a board member I've uh, I've I've been on the board for about two and a half years and uh, but I have been volunteering with the with the group since the beginning primarily just with with the wing wing festival. Uh-huh. To my knowledge, and this is this is before my time, but I believe that when the group was formed there was this sort of um i don't know if you'd call it sort of a a a little bit of a swagger if you will i think the original founders were thinking like well you know when the you know people who are elected and and everyone else who's supposed to you know take care of things when they can't get it done you know the a team Uh can't get it done then you call them the b team so i think i think that was that was really more the original intention but i think i think over over the years now it's kind of been more like you know our name is b team buffalo but a lot of people just call us the b team and then people think the b stands for buffalo so it's just kind of caught on that way but i think you have to remember too historically that if you look back at 2008 you know buffalo back then uh, wasn't didn't quite have a lot of the happiness and the redevelopment and everything that 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 mm-hmm. you see today so um you know different times but certainly of course the name has has stuck and i think i think now it kind of has a little bit more of a positive connotation if you will 
Yeah, it's pretty fitting, and it's a, it's a cool name, and Buffalo really um, needs a B team anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, that's another story. The, Bill, the Bills. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> so, uh, Beverly David Lewis. Um, Beverly, um, you are the Director of Community Affairs for Buffalo Promise Neighborhood. Tell me about Buffalo Promise Neighborhood. What is that? So Buffalo Promise Neighborhood has been in existence since 1993. Uh We are within the university district, um, and it came about because um, we have a longstanding history with um, Westminster Community Charter School, which started back in 1993. But um, Buffalo Promise was born based on um, a scholarship that we applied for through the Department of Education during the Barack Obama era, Mm -hmm. where he um, sent out some grants and said, hey, is there anybody out there who is interested in improving their schools and the neighborhoods in which you serve? And as the story goes, we applied for this grant. Um, We won the grant. So for six years, seven years, we've been in existence. Mm -hmm. It's a very small footprint within the university district. We cover... Three schools. We have three schools in our footprint right now that we work closely with. One is Westminster Community Charter School. Mm -hmm. The other one, which was a Buffalo public school that we converted into a charter school. Um, The second one is Public School 80, Highgate Heights. And the third one is Buffalo Promise Neighborhood Children's Academy, Mm -hmm. um, which is our provider is Educates. And starting very soon, we will have a fourth school, which would Mm. be our Children's Academy at Gerard Place. Wow. So um, we have, um, if you've heard the story over the years about Buffalo Promise, um, in 1993, um, Bob Wilmers, who was at that time the president of M&T Bank, who is no longer with us, um, went to went into the schools and said, hey, listen, I want to improve the education of the children in the community that mm-hmm. surrounds that school. I want to improve that education. So um, Buffalo Promise is in partnership with M&T Bank, um, and they've been in the neighborhood for over t- almost 25 years now, making wow. um, sustainable changes. So how can we change not only mm-hmm. the lives of our children, but how indeed do we change our community as well, which is pretty much what I do. I pretty much boots to the ground, looking at the community, how do we want to improve, how do we want to change, what things do we want to make different so that the place that we live and work is different, you know, where we live is different. And what do we see as community members? Um, What do we see and how do we see our neighborhoods to be different? Um, And Buffalo Promise is um, in partnership. We have partners, a lot of community partners, which is really great because, you know, no work gets done with a few hands we need many hands um Mm. we are partnered with um um, we are partnered with university district um community development we're partnered with um alex wright and um food co-op african-american food co-op we're partnered with um of course now the b team we're Mm. partnered with um university district block club coalition so we are partnered we're partnered with belmont we're partnered with ecc one stop so we have a lot of community-based partners of organizations that we bring to the table only because in order for everything to work you have many voices and those voices are saying are in response to what the community is saying So if the community comes to me and says, Beverly, we don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Because if you look at our footprint, we go from Bailey and um, Bailey and Main Street Mm -hmm. to Bailey and Kensington. Mm, There is no grocery store per se in that footprint. However, if you have a car, Mm -hmm. you can go wherever you want to go. Right. Right. But if you have to walk or take the bus there is no access to fresh Mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables. So they came to me and said, Beverly, we don't have access. In our schools, we're teaching our children about how to eat properly and eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So if I'm telling my kids to do this and their parents don't have access to get it, how do I bring it into the community? So I reached out to Alex Wright, African American Food Co-op, and some other folks, and we sort of do this farmer's market once a month, all Mm -hmm. year. So at least you have access. Yeah, I know we, um, I think Yasmin Young uh, does a lot with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. We've had Yasmin over the years to come out and support us on the summer farmer markets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So we've had lots of community members and lots of community organizations that volunteer their time to come out and support us in addition to community members. Now, are you guys also, are you affiliated with the um, Imperial 
market that Imperial just... Market is brand well, he's um renovated, so it it looks brand new. It looks like a grocer. And technically, if we say the footprint, whatever that is, and you all can't see me on radio with the air quotes, um, <laughs> they were outside of our footprint. Oh, okay. They are outside of our footprint because our footprint technically in the past has ended at Kensington and Bailey. Mm, okay. And um, I know that they have refurbished their store, and now mm. they also have fresh fruits and vegetables. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. And I know they're moving along trying to figure out how do I get this in my store because as a store, you want to make sure whatever you bring in is profitable, mm-hmm. right? So you want to make sure that the neighbors know about, okay, now we have fresh fruits and vegetables. Right. So I bring it into the schools. So you can come into the schools and get my, you know, when we have those Saturday academies. Mm-hmm. You can come into the school and have access. Wow, that's great. That's really good. Now, so how does that tie in with the uh, City of Light? So what happened is I think I got a call from one of the board members and said, hey, I've heard about Buffalo Promise Neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I heard about some of the great things that you all are doing, and we would like to partner with you. And what could not have been a better um, call or conversation mm-hmm. um, that I had about, I don't know, it was about a year ago, I would say, about yeah, a year ago um, with their board and You know, the conversation we sort of talked about, you know, this would be amazing because Buffalo Promise, those schools are a part of the community schools model. Mm -hmm. And we have been school 80 every year has always put on a winter wonderland um, Mm -hmm. sort of carnival at their school. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this would be a perfect marriage. This would be a perfect partnership of people working together Um, because I believe in let's work together. It's no need to rebuild um, because we have a lot of great things going on, but how do we make them even better? And this was a great opportunity for us to do that. So we had some conversations. They went back to their board, and they do elections and votes about neighborhoods that they want to visit and what mm. they want to see. I think I gave them a tour that day of our neighborhood and what mm. our neighborhood looked like, as well as a tour of our schools, mm. and talk to them about the fact that um, we have relationships with our block clubs. We have relationships with the University District Councilman's Office. Um, we have a relationship with business and industry that surrounds our community. So um, for the B team, that sort of was a perfect fit in terms of they didn't have to worry about location, a staging location. They didn't have to worry about um, housing necessarily um, because we have an entity to be able to get to those things where they don't have to start from the ground up. So sometimes it's nice when you can kind of walk into something where some things are already set up and staged Mm -hmm. so that you walk in, you're just making it better and more beautiful. So is the Winter Wonderland and the Carnival, are they the same day? Or Yep, they're all at um, Highgate Heights, which is our community school, which mm-hmm. is public school 80. Um, we're going to start at about 9 o'clock in the morning. It goes about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. On December so 8th, right? On December 8th, mm-hmm. we are going to have the Carnival, which was going to be sponsored by the B team. So they're going to do a lot of Carnival games, give out prizes. Mm-hmm. Um, we will also have some characters in the building. We will have Elsa. We will have from Frozen. And there's another character yeah, from Anna, Frozen. Anna, <laughs> there you go i've never uh, seen frozen um i've never seen it because um i have boys in my household and they didn't want to see it um and then um we'll have a santa as well as olaf as well we will also have because it's a community school we will have free breakfast and lunch but we will have a host of other activities we will have face painting we'll have sepa gallery will be there mm. um taking pictures we'll have our farmers market um we will also have um some other things going on in the building so it's a fun fun activities for parents and children Mm. um there are also um there is also a host of activities um and we send out that information through all of our schools and through our community so that people can come and take advantage so it is going to be a day if you want to have a lot of fun that day there are so many activities going on in the university district that day in addition to that later in the day university district block club coalition is doing their annual banquet with DJ wow. Slim, it's an awards banquet, mm-hmm. so the community can come out and take advantage of that. So you can literally have a day wow. full of nothing but fun and activities for children and adults. Mm-hmm. So if people say there's no, I can't afford to do, um, I can't afford to take my kids to you know all of these other things because right. it's expenses or, or I don't have transportation, these things are happening in our neighborhood 
at our schools and they happen twice a month. Um, so we invite people to come out and celebrate with us and come out and have a good time. Cause when I say we have fun, we have fun every other Saturday at our community schools. Wow. That's cool. So now Tony, um, I know with city of light, um, in the past you gave away toys that's for correct. the kids. You're doing that again? Oh, absolutely. And that's a lot of our fundraising that happens year round. It's, it's not just for the decorations, right? It's also for the toys. So as part of the carnival this year mm-hmm. that, that we put on, um, we make sure that, you know, every, every child in particular this year, uh, st- either students of high gate heights or those who live in the community that mm-hmm. they're able to come away with a toy maybe maybe more if if, if right. we have more we we make sure that they're they're really good toys so it's not not just <laughs> you know chintzy plastic type of things it's but not uh, the dollar store right 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 um what i will say <laughs> is uh and also you know with all the other activities that that are going on we'll also have games for for the children to play too so mm-hmm. so it's a, it's a lot of fun what we've done in the past with other other organizations mm-hmm. and neighborhoods that we've partnered with is normally we'll we'll be decorating in the morning and right. then as we shift into the lunch hour then the carnival right, will take right. place in the afternoon mm-hmm. this year though with the partnership that we have with the buffalo promise neighborhood and the fact that they have the the events so, every yeah. second saturday mm-hmm. and it's in the morning hours so this year, what we're going to be doing is, as volunteers are out decorating between roughly nine and noon, the carnival is going to happen at at the same time. Right, so right, right. it's going to make it a very um, intense, packed day. Mm-hmm. It certainly increases our need for volunteers. We're completely confident that we'll that we'll be able to get it done. And luckily, everything is is very close together too. But yeah, it's going to be instead of a a longer day, it's going to be a more uh, a little bit more of a compact day and everything kind of all happening at once but thankfully again as you know we've already heard from beverly we've got we've got a lot of great resources and partners in the house already so we'll kind of cap off that day at one o'clock in the auditorium at the school we'll have mm-hmm. a tree lighting as well as carolers hopefully some guests we're, we're trying to invite some of the uh, you know, local leaders as well to come on down. So we'll we'll do that, and and followed by a little bit of a an outdoor stroll to sort of see the lights, and mm-hmm. we'll have um, you know some donuts and cider and things like right outside for people to grab as well. So it's it's really going to be again a a very a very packed day, but it uh, you know we're we're thrilled to make it happen. It's we we can't we certainly cannot do it by ourselves and we we need that we need a good partner and a solid place to to do it um just to give you a little bit of history too some of the neighborhoods that we've been in the past last year we decorated the um black rock area black rock riverside so so we we staged at uh i believe it was saint john's united church of christ Mm -hmm. um and then did the tree lighting right at the area um I forget the exact streets. I want to. I want to say Niagara and oh boy, I can't even remember Amherst. I yeah, think. it's right at the corner there. That yeah, little, that yeah. little park. So we did yeah. that in the year before. We were at uh, near the Central Terminal at the Matterburn Hope yep, Center. Yep, yep, so we yep. staged there. But mm-hmm. yeah, we've been. I mean, we've been all over the Seneca Babcock neighborhood, um, Fruit Belt. So always a different different neighborhood every year and um you know that's yet another reason why it worked out this year is that you know this we wanted when we were thinking about neighborhoods we said you know we we really um it's time to get back to the the east side and um everything just came together very beautifully yeah well hooking up with the um uh buffalo promise neighborhood it sounds like it's uh like a hundredfold beyond uh what you guys were doing before which was which was a pretty big deal so it sounds really festive. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I was going to ask you about the tree lighting. So you're still doing the tree lighting at the um, uh, at the near the end of the event, or yeah, yeah it'll be around one o'clock. We'll do it in twelve thirty. Oh, twelve thirty. It's going to be at oh. like twelve thirty. Okay. Um, only because we the kids are going to have an opportunity to do a craft to make an ornament. Oh, so it's really? going to be set up where you make an ornament. So they're going to make two ornaments, hopefully. Make wow. an ornament, take an ornament, but also they can have an opportunity to put an ornament on the tree. Wow, that's cool. But because none of our schools have trees on the outside, 
Right, There's no right. tree in the front of the school. Mm, right. We're going to decorate a tree inside in the auditorium. Oh, okay. And um, and then that's when those dignitaries are going to come out and speak. And, you know, but we're going to decorate it inside so people can see it. Right. Um, and so then they, they can come into the school, they can decorate it, and we can all take part in that. And then mm. we'll go out. And normally because the lights are lit up and it's going to be dark, but because we're doing an earlier day, right, right, right. they'll see the outside decorations. And then people, because, you know, traditionally in people in Buffalo, I know we used to do this. Where we would ride around and looking at different streets mm-hmm. and checking out the lights and stuff. So we're going to encourage our families to mm-hmm. um, come back later during the day, definitely, but continue to go throughout the holiday season and come and look at the houses on our blocks that have been decorated. Now, do you guys still need volunteers? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, you know, we we tend to do pretty well. People get excited for this, and especially those who have mar- who have done it in the past will mark it on their calendars and everything. But, um, you know, we certainly won't won't turn other people away if we have more more than is needed and again with the carnival and the decorating happening at once i'm of the mindset that we may need mm-hmm. more this year than than we have right. had in years past so yeah absolutely the best advice i can give is just head right to bteambuffalo.com or find us on social media and it's all right there within a click to sign up and uh, you can put on there what you're interested in, you know, because we we need people obviously to do decorating. We need people to help with the carnival. We need people mm-hmm. to help with cleanup at the end. We're also doing some setup and getting supplies and things like that ready the day before. So there's there's a number of different opportunities that can fit uh, your different schedules and, and what you're interested in. And, you know, some people like to get right out there and, you know, out mm-hmm. in the cold and decorate and others are like, no, 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 <laughs> I am staying right in here. And I, you know, I'll do face painting. I'll pass out food, but right. do not, do not <laughs> send me outside. But the one thing too, is that um, oftentimes, you know, if, if you're just on your own or if you have a family member or whatever, great. Mm-hmm. A lot of times too, though, uh, companies will send entire teams of volunteers and we have, you know, teams that have done it in, uh, you know, years past over and over again. One recent team I can think of is, um, and they've been a multi-year sponsor, is uh, Value Home Centers. So you see them with their mm-hmm. value shirts on and, um, you know, going right to town. Of, of course, there's their houses tend to look the best because you know, they know what they're doing. <laughs> but uh, um, but we have lots of teams like that, or you could form one. So that mm-hmm. that's another option as well. And we cool. had the pleasure, too, of having our M&T volunteers come out as well. Okay. Um, the, one of the beauty about working at M&T Bank is, is that we um, get volunteer hours. So mm-hmm. departments will come out and volunteer. Um, so I know they're volunteering probably on that Friday in yes. terms of um, sort of the setup crew that's getting all the materials together that we're going to need on Saturday. So which is a plus um, because then we don't have to sort of pull people out of work mm-hmm. in terms of community people out of work, but M and T volunteers can sort of come during the day if they're available through, mm-hmm. you know, their mm-hmm. departments and say, Hey, my department is um, volunteering. Um, so that's going to be a plus for us as well for this event. Cause like you said, light, many hands make light work. Um, so um, we have them working on that event as well. So where do you, where's the funding come from for, all of this stuff it sounds pretty uh extensive yeah well first and foremost it would be possible without many many generous donors both in kind as well as just Mm -hmm. through through funds um we've actually met some of our sponsors who have helped from for many many years uh m&t bank Mm -hmm. uh the uh national buffalo wing festival ingram micro um but we do other things as well in terms of all sorts of different fundraising things throughout the year. We, the Buffalo Bisons, we were fortunate to have them. They, mm. We did a special night for B Team where proceeds went back. Mm-hmm. We actually put on an event called Comedy for a Cause where we try to do a night of stand-up close close mm. if we can to the neighborhood and that raises funds we do a christmas in july happy hour and but we also have opportunities just that people want to donate money or even you know new or gently used toys they can get in touch with the group we have all sorts of options that you can find on our website so you know any kind of donation you know whether it's people's time money or items that can be used we're we're all ears and um you know it's it's not a huge chunk of change that we're looking at again we're we're, we're entirely volunteers we have mm-hmm. other jobs and 
things that we do in our life outside of this. But um, by coming together, which, you know, certainly Buffalo is the you know, city of good, good neighbors. Um, you know, we have we have our goals and we reach out and we have, again, generous donors who will help us every year and new ones that come through and make it work. So. So if someone's listening and wants to donate, uh, what should they do? Besides going to our website or social media, the, the easiest way I'd say is if you have email, um, send an email to info at bteambuffalo.com. Okay. That way it will reach all of our board members and somebody mm-hmm. will be able to respond uh, right away and we can work things out from there. All right. That's cool. So if you want to donate any money to uh, this cause, it's uh, info at bteambuffalo.com, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. That's cool. Sounds like it's uh, going to be a, a very successful event. And um, as you well know, this um, this uh, program airs on all four of our stations. So uh, people from WYRK are listening, WBLK, uh, Jack FM, and Mix ninety six. So you might get a uh, you might get inundated with volunteers. That would be a wonderful thing. That'd right? be great. That's that's perfectly fine. And honestly, that's that's the whole spirit of what city of light is is let's come together let's help out a neighborhood in buffalo it's it and it's also what the holidays are all Mm -hmm. about it's give back make it a joyous day brighten the neighborhood right that's why we do it so it's december 8th and the location again specifically is highgate heights public school 80 it's at 600 highgate avenue in buffalo and it starts at what time? 9 a.m. And we want 9 to we 1, want, right? 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., yes. starts at 9, and we definitely would want volunteers, though, to come by 8.30 to check okay. in. Yep. And uh, in terms of um, people who can um, attend the event, you don't have to be in that neighborhood, right? Anyone can come? Anybody can come. Anyone. Okay, cool. So bring your kids December 8th, and uh, from 9 to 1, it should be a very successful event. And, uh, Tony, thanks for uh coming through and uh beverly david lewis director of community affairs at buffalo prompts neighborhood uh tony with b team buffalo it's been a pleasure talking to you guys and um i look forward to it i'll be there all right thank Thank you you. looking forward to seeing you